How's it going everybody? My name is Dylan Da Silva and this is my 2JZ300ZX that I'm swapping over to an MS3 Pro Ultimate ECU. So in this video I'm going to show you how to go about the whole process. I'll probably break it up into three separate videos and try to give as much detail as I can. Uh, the first video is probably going to cover the physical installation of the MS3 Pro Ultimate. The second video is going to be the setup and the configuration of Tuner Studio and how to get this thing started. And the third video will be my attempt at actually trying to dyno tune this thing myself. I'm fairly new to this. It's a steep learning curve. So we're going to see what we can do. Hopefully we don't break anything in the process. So let me begin by giving you guys some backstory on the entire build. Uh, this is Medusa. I call it Medusa for a few cheesy reasons. We're not going to get into that. But I built this the past five years throughout college and it's currently running an AEM Infinity 6. So at the time, this is what I could afford. It was available and it did the job. The car ran. But you know, full disclosure, I work for Hoffman Innovations, who is the parent company to Ampify and DIY Autotune. They are the owners and creators of the Mega Squirt series, the MS3 Pro, MS3 Pro Ultimate, all those ECUs. And so without giving any bias, I'm gonna send the, or put the link in the description for this ECU and you can go through the specs yourself. And you, know, you can kind of figure out why I'm choosing to go this route aside from me having uh, affiliation with working here. So with all that said, let me go ahead and give you guys the details on my plan of attack for taking on this entire ECU swap. And we'll go ahead and start with the pinout. So before I take you guys into the pinout on my Excel doc, I'm gonna explain to you the few steps I'm gonna to take to do this whole swap. Uh, first thing, you know, I mean, you, this could be first or second, is to put together a pinout. So the pinout is gonna tell me what pin on the current ECU is gonna translate over to what pin on the MS3 Pro Ultimate. So every pin has a certain functionality and you wanna make sure that functionality is kept into the new system. So my Excel doc is gonna tell me what pin, what wire goes to what pin, what wire on the new ECU. So that will be step one for me. The next step uh, would be to take the ECU and see if I can mount it anywhere uh, new or in the same place or however you want to mount this to the current uh, setup. That is going to be the next you know, logical step. I think I'm going to keep mine in the same area, which is the passenger footwell, and I'll show you guys that after uh, the pinout. Uh, and then lastly would be any troubleshooting. So what, does the ECU power on? Are all your sensors reading logical values? And you know, does, does everything connect? Because that will tell you if the pinout and the uh, physical installation of this is correct. So here is the pinout. I have the AEM pin number on the left, the hardware name, the function, and notes about it. Now all these columns were provided by the wiring specialties company when I first bought my harness, because I bought a wiring specialties harness a few years into my build. It took me a while, but when I bought that harness, they gave me this physical sheet of paper with all of these labeled on it. And they also had all these colors associated with it too. Well, it turns out that those colors are wrong. They don't match the harness. I don't know what they really mean. It might be something proprietary to them. But anyways, this is how I set up this document to work for me. So like I mentioned, I have the AM Infinity set up here and I have the MSD Pro Ultimate outputs on this side. So what I did is I found, okay, this is a low side for output and I associated that with our high current out too. So you have to make sure that the pins can do the same function. So for that case, that one's a fuel pump number two. Uh, the low side output number four on the AM took care of that. Well, on the Evo Ultimate, sorry, MS3 Pro Ultimate, the high current out two is also capable of doing that as well. So going down the list, that is what I did for all of these. I actually took note of the real colors as well. And uh, these two boxes are minimized. I'm going to use them as check boxes later. But you really want to go through this and check it over quite a bit. You don't want to get this wrong and you especially don't want power going to the wrong output or wrong input and shorting somewhere in your circuitry. Like You don't want any mistakes. So if you can, if you have somebody that's a valuable source, have them look over your document, tell them, hey, does this make sense? Just to, you know, have that extra sense of security because you don't want to mess anything up doing this as it can happen and it often does happen. But now that I showed you the pinout, and, and how I'm going to translate each wire. Let me go ahead and take you over to the car and show you the current setup on where the ECU is currently located and how I think I'm gonna mount the new ECU. Before we start digging into anything, disconnect the battery just to be safe. The last thing you need is an electrical problem to arise because you didn't disconnect the battery. So first things first, let's get this out. So I'm gonna try and keep the ECU in this area, but the MS3 might be able to go upside down on top with wires kind of coming out to the side. Uh, whatever I can seem to make happen, but right now I'm going to start clearing a few things out, trying to remove this plastic piece, maybe take the glove box out, or whatever I can do to get me enough space in here, because when you're cutting and stripping wires in a, such a, a crammed area, it's going to be hectic. So let's start clearing this area out and pull the old ECU. 
All right, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison. There's the MS3 Pro Ultimate. We have a lot more I.O. than this guy, but you are sacrificing more real estate for that. As you can see, it's a little bigger. Mm, they're about the same in thickness, really. It's just this has a bigger base. This has a higher protruding connector. But I will have to get fancy with how I mount this, especially with uh, those three connectors to both tap into, or to all tap into. So let me go show you what I have planned out at the moment. So with how crammed this whole area is, this was really the only spot that I could make work. So I went ahead and redrilled the holes. I got it mounted, it's secured. I got three out of the four bolts holding it in. But now that that's done, it's time to start wiring. I have the connectors here. The old connector is right here. And as you can see, it reaches the farthest connector. So there's gonna be no issue with wiring uh, directly from where I cut the crimps at off of right here. I'm doing the second wire this right here and I'm trying to cut as close to the crimp as possible so I can get as, mo as much wire as possible right so if you do that you're kind of maximizing your space because this wire is very limited and it barely makes all these connectors I may have to go back there a little more and try to feed a little more line through or figure something out if it becomes an issue but uh, I'll show you this this crimp complete you know start to finish to see or at least show you how a little congested but we're making it work maybe a little more on that that looks good there we go all right so here is the terminal i actually took some pliers and squeezed the tabs in just a little bit to help assist with the uh, terminal insertion on the tool this is just a generic tool that'll work i found the right size and i'm going to use it so I always get the terminal to sit right in there because this one's a ratcheting crimp so if you ratchet it just barely enough it'll hold the terminal in for you and all you got to do is make sure that your wire is all the way in sufficiently and that the back tabs touch the insulation once you're there go ahead and follow through ratchet all the way down that looks pretty good now I'm going to do the insulation on a larger size crimping section just because it, it is insulation, so it's thicker, and you don't have to use the smaller size. And there we go. So now to repeat that for about 40 more times, this thing isn't full, and it's an 80 pin connector, and there's about 40 to 50 wires. I actually didn't count on my sheet, but that is the process. And now this was terminal number two on the AEM connector, which is going to, I'm sorry, pinhole number two which is going to the white connector hole number 24 it makes it very easy because the number of the port is right above and easy to depict as for this amphenol all I had to go off of was a 1 and a 61 on this guy you can see on the bottom left it says 1 and on the top left it says 61 so you kind of have to count all those all the way in, which kind of sucks. But it is what it is. So we said W24. Yes. So white pin 24 would be this corner right here. good and I'm gonna repeat that for like 45 more times so here we go all right so after some troubleshooting with this I had a little bit of a wiring issue with the ECCS relay that came with the previous harness because this is ordered through wiring specialties back when I first built this car a couple years ago so I figured that out and I actually got this to power on we're at a good state right now I have a few wires that I haven't connected yet because those are either not in use because of the switchover or to be in use later on. I'm gonna probably assign them to something eventually, but for now I just have them here as they're not important. But I will power on the ECU. You'll sh you should see four green lights and your red light. The red light is just a digital IO. You can ignore that for now because we didn't configure any of the settings yet. So just to show you what she does. 
You heard the priming pulse from the injectors, so that's nothing to worry about there. But here is the colors of the lights or LEDs on your motherboard. So just to give you an idea. But now we are all good to connect to her and get some configuration started. So with the ECU physically installed, let me take you on over to the installation video of the Tuner Studio software and your registration code. So I'll jump to that real quick. I actually did that on another day, so we'll play that now. So when you get your kit, you're going to get this little sheet that kind of guides you through how do you get the software on your computer, as well as your serial number on the sticker and the USB drive with all the files that you need to download the software and get yourself started. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, check out what we got, and download the software for the MS3 Pro Ultimate. So when you open up the files in the USB drive, these are the ones that come up. And right now we're just looking to download the software onto my computer. So we're only worried about the MS3 Pro Ultimate setup. I have V1.3, you may have something else. But we're going to go ahead and install that and continue on with the next steps. So continuing on to the next step on the little card that you guys got. Uh, this is where you redeem your Tuner Studio software registration. So you go to the website or the link that's on the card, which is this right here, efinalytics.com forward slash MS3 Pro. And you are going to fill out these fields and enter your serial number here and create, basically create your account for the license. So I'm going to go ahead and complete that step. And we'll head back on over to the Tuner Studio software where we can start playing with the ECU settings and getting it set up. So after you have created your account, you should have gotten an email with your information and a generated key code. That code is what you're going to enter into here. You're going to go to help and then enter registration. So you should have gotten your name, your last name, which you all are, you uploaded, and then the registration key. Now this was generated in that email. If you don't know what it is, check the email and it'll give it to you. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these fields out and I can unlock the full potential of the software because of that. So I have Tuner Studio open. I have the USB cable that comes with the ECU plugged into the USB port on the ECU and onto the computer. So if I key it on, I should hear the fuel pumps run for two seconds and the ECU should connect to the laptop. There we go, we are connected. Uh, depending on what you have, you may have to install some drivers and those drivers are available on the uh, DIY Autotune site. So that'll help you actually get the connection to work if, I mean, you don't already have it. I already have some, so we're, we're good in that case. So that will just about wrap up video one. Video one was only supposed to cover the physical installation of the ECU, putting together your own pinout, actually translating over each wire and doing the crimping process, uh, getting your ECU to power on, also getting your computer uh, set up with the Tuner Studio software, and also getting your ECU to connect to the computer. So once all of those were complete, that wraps up step one. Step two is where you're getting to the troubleshooting aspect of all this and setting up the parameters in Tutor, Tuner Studio for your engine. So I have a 2JZ. If you guys have one, this is very applicable. Or if you just want to go through that process, I would recommend watching video two, which will be somehow associated with this one wherever you're watching it. But uh, yes, thank you for watching video one. Come with me for part two, where we go through the setup troubleshooting and because you may have to go back into your wiring. I can guarantee it. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching video one.